It's, it's so good to be with y'all here this morning. Um, this is home for me. I see a lot of familiar faces, but I know that we're family, each and every one of us in here. Uh, uh, you guys are my spiritual family. <laughs> um, I just have so many memories in this place. This is such a special place for me, from you know, uh, hearing the words of Jesus for the first time in my life, learning how to worship, learning how to pray, being discipled, not just by leadership and, and like, like Pastor Scott and Pastor John, but, but the people in the seats. Learning how to worship the Lord with all of my heart. Learning, learning what, what, what the spiritual gifts are, you know, by, by hearing somebody share a message or a prophecy and then, and then being able to, to hear an interpretation and, and oh my goodness, I've, I've just been so blessed to be a part of a family like this. So I want to say, I want to say, Thank you. Thank you, because, because y'all have enriched my life tremendously. And if you don't know me, just, just by extension you have. <laughs> I'm happy to be here with y'all. If you, if you want to pull up the first slide up there, that's Elizabeth, my wife, and that's Emilia, my daughter. Is she in here? Oh, she's downstairs. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm so happy for Sunday school. Just send her down there. Don't have to. <laughs> I'll share something with y'all. One day I said I was I was I was preaching in in Virginia and uh, the, the 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 state and um, she she I said something and then I sit down after the service and she she comes up to me and she says, "Daddy, you lied." <laughs> Because I said something about locking the doors, and she's like, we don't have locks on the doors. You know, I just maybe exaggerated a little bit. Or I was caught up in the moment, and, and I asked the pastor if I could apologize to the congregation. Because my little police daughter, slash, you know, I, I wanted to do right by her. But uh, Elizabeth's not able to be here with us today. She's... And, and we, could be, we could be praying if, if, if y'all can. Uh, she's battling Crohn's disease and we've spent the week in the, in the hospital and it hasn't been a, a good, uh, it hasn't been a, a pleasant journey for her or for our family, but she needs our prayers. She needs to be healed in Jesus' name. I mean, there's been medical intervention, there's been surgeries, there's been medicine, there's been everything, and she's still at this, at this moment where she still has this thorn on her side and, and relying on Jesus and saying that his grace is sufficient. But I would love her to be healed in Jesus' name. I would love her. Can we pray right now? Can somebody come and pray? Can, can I have somebody that's... I, I mean, I pray for her every day. Like, maybe, maybe one of y'all could pray. Who, who wants to pray? Yes, come pray in Spanish. Let's do it. Maybe the Lord will hear us today in Spanish. That's a joke. He always hears us. Padre. <laughs> En el nombre de Jesús venimos a tu presencia en esta mañana, Señor, para pedirte, Señor, por la salud de Elizabeth, Señor. Queremos declarar tu palabra, Señor, que dice que por tus llagas nosotros hemos sido sanados, Señor. Creemos en esa palabra. El sacrificio que tú hiciste en la cruz del Calvario es suficiente, Señor, y tu sangre poderosa para sanarnos, Señor. 
en esta mañana declaramos en el nombre de Jesús en el nombre de Jesús declaramos sanidad, restauración en este cuerpo Señor porque hay poder en tu nombre Señor en tu gran nombre hay poder Jesús Padre te damos gracias desde ya creemos Señor porque nuestra fe es grande y que tú vas a hacer las cosas Señor por tu misericordia, por tu amor y por tu bondad Señor en el nombre de Jesús declaramos Señor ese cuerpo sano Señor y todo aquel Señor que esté pasando en situaciones de enfermedad en esta mañana declaramos tu pueblo Señor sano sano, sano en el nombre de Jesús, sano en el nombre de Jesús porque por tu llaga nosotros hemos sido sanados Señor, en el nombre de Jesús lo declaramos Señor en el nombre de Jesús Amén y Amén Gracias hermano Thank you for praying for Elizabeth. Man, <laughs> we try to get through this today, right? Um, so we're missionaries in Estonia. Who knows where Estonia is at? Uh-huh. Well, y'all must have forgot, because I preached here about three years ago. <laughs> I got three hands up. Well, I'll tell you where Estonia is at. Estonia is in northeastern Europe, and the best way I could describe it, you find, you go to, you know where Alaska is at? You know where Juneau, Alaska is? Okay, you get, you get a line, you, you draw a line straight across, heading east until you hit the Russian border, and right there you'll find Estonia. Um, it's a beautiful country. You want to get the, the next picture up? It's a beautiful country uh, the, after that one. Yeah, oh man, okay, we'll just go back to the first one, sorry. Um, I usually have a picture there of Estonia, but it probably got lost. Um, it is considered an introvert nation. And for some reason, God sent this uh, extroverted person. <laughs> to an introverted nation. They, they used to be a part of uh, the Soviet Union uh, for, for many, many years. And, and it's, it's, it's such a special place. It's considered the least religious country in the world. That means that most people that I have a conversation with have, have never met a follower of Jesus. Most people that I have a conversation with uh, have never even pondered a reason to have faith in their lives. It's a country that has all the people that have all of their needs met, right? Like a social system that, that you know, they have health care, they have education, they have um, um, public transportation is free, they have, they have all of their like physical needs, needs met. They have somebody to rely on for those things. And The only thing which is the best thing that we have to offer is, is Jesus. So how do you talk to a people that have everything they think they need? They are introverted, so they don't want to talk. They, they, they don't like foreigners, so <laughs> I have a hard time. Uh, how, how do you communicate with a people that don't have a place for faith in their mental and physical construct? It's one of the most difficult things to do. But let me tell you, it's not far off from what we do here. Uh, they're a special people, they're in a special place, and, 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 and it's an amazing thing to do, but there's... There's nothing different with the condition of man's heart, <laughs> you know? So we've uh, tried to find some creative ways to build relationships, to talk to people, to, 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 to share our lives. So we, we started a coffee shop, um, like, like a ministry. Um, we have, uh, if, if you want to pop up to the, the pop up one, we started off with, with just uh, in, our, in our neighborhood. Like if you see in the picture, it's like there's milk crates and there's a piece of wood on top. We, had, we hardly had any resources and things like that. You know, we're selling cold brew and, 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 and cookies and uh, uh, banana bread. <laughs> And you would be surprised. I had, before that moment, I had lived in Estonia for a year, 
trying to connect with people, trying to have conversations, trying to, 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 to meet my neighbors. And it's a place where I live in a building, and in our staircase, there's probably 16 different apartments. And it's the kind of place where, like, if you hear, if they heard somebody's door open and they had to go somewhere, they would wait until they wouldn't hear any any more steps. It's like, it's like they avoid contact at all costs. <laughs> so I had tried for a year to connect with people and then we just did this pop-up cafe and, and you would be amazed at the conversations that we were able to have, at the relationships that we were able to, to begin. Like at the neighbor that I had been trying to talk to for a whole year, how he would sit, he just sat there and talked to me for like over half an hour. It, it, it showed to us that like, hey, we have a reason to be in each other's lives you know we got this this little thing in between us like a a cafe you know but it was it's been a, a tool to to build relationships and and then that that grew and then the next year if you want to go to the next picture we started a, a, a mobile coffee business and that is Melvan um, it, it's a 1979 Ford Transit. It's beautiful to me. <laughs> And you'd think of this van, you'd avoid it at all costs in America, right? <laughs> but it's like the perfect trap for Jordy, you know, van that says coffee on the side, I'm getting kidnapped, you know? <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is also a special thing and, and a moment I wanna take and just say, just say thank you. Because Solid Rock, y'all sent finances, y'all sent $10,000 to help turn that van into a coffee shop. And, and y'all sent people, uh, Doug and, and John got, got on a plane and, and went all the way to, to Estonia. And we were, they were cutting wood, they were ripping out, there was shaggy carpet in that thing, red. <laughs> red shaggy carpet. I don't know how you touched it, Doug, but y'all did it, you know? And, and, uh, and y'all really came through and blessed us and blessed the Estonian people uh, with turning that van into a mobile coffee shop. There's an there's a espresso bar in the back. It's like, it's, it's got all the bells and whistles, guys. Like, like thank y'all. Seriously, thank you. Um, and then uh, later on th that year, we, we actually started a cafe, if you go to the next picture. And this is Colab. It's, it's, uh, if you, uh, anything that's colorful in there has Elizabeth's touch on it. She's such a wonderful designer. She did our logos. She's, she's just done everything, the interior design. And it's, it's such a beautiful place that we get to have and make relationships with people. It's in the kind of like garden level, half basement, half first floor of an apartment building. So we're the only thing around like uh, like there's there's no other businesses around we're the neighborhood coffee shop it's like you come in and I would relate it to you know like maybe like a, is there a bakery in town like there used to be bakeries or or, or like the gas station coffee place where you go in and you walk in and there's there's a group of farmers drinking their coffee you know you know complaining about the weather or something like that <laughs> But, uh, but it's like we create that atmosphere where it's like a place where you can go and you can just be, right? You can have conversation, you can meet people, you can drink great coffee, and, 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 and you could build relationships with maybe the people that are working there. So with that, we invite people into our homes. So we meet people there, but we're not like uh, sharing, uh, it's not like a, we don't evangelize from behind the counter unless if the Lord is leading us that way, 100%, yeah? But most of the time, we just get to know people, start building a relationship, and invite them to our homes and, and uh, have dinner. We'll get more into that. But, uh, but yeah, it's been a blessing to do CoLab. And um, our, our mission statement for, for CoLab is, if you want to go to the next one, is cultivating community via coffee. This is a normal day. So if you can see, it's full of people. And we have people from all walks of life there. You have some international people, uh, some, some Estonians. We have uh, uh, you know people that love Jesus and people that for sure don't love Jesus. And, and uh, it's, it's just a beautiful mixture and a place where 
you know what's the number one thing people say when they come by? They say, they say, I love the vibes here. And you know what they're, you know what they're sensing? They're sensing the Holy Spirit. They're sensing the peace of the Lord. They're sensing what I sensed when I walked through those doors for the first time and I knew something was different about this place and this people. And that's really cool. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's what we do uh, in terms of like our, our platform. But, but I mean, you could look online and, and check out our socials to find out more about that. That's, that's not what I'm here to share today. Today I get to share something from my heart. And, and I've been praying, what should I share with my family? What should I share with, you know, when I'm in the United States and I'm going to different churches and, and talking and, and, you know, raising support and doing all of this, what should I share? You know, what, 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 what am I going to talk about? <laughs> and, and the Lord said to me, share what you do. So today I want to share with you, like, what we actually do as missionaries on the ground because, you know, you might be thinking, like, are they just drinking coffee over there? You know, they're driving around that nice orange van. <laughs> what, what are they doing every day, you know? What do they do with the $25 I send them every month? I need a report. <laughs> <laughs> so today I want to share uh, what we do with our lives and with our day. And if you can get anything out of what I share today, I want you to get this one thing. There's nothing different about me in Estonia compared to you in Worthington, Wyndham, Fulda, Rushmore. I just met you from Rushmore. There's, there's no different expectation that I have because I'm in Estonia because I got on an airplane because because I I'm a missionary there's no different expectation about me than you you see when we when we signed up for this life when we signed on the dotted line yes Jesus I believe in you I receive your transformation your healing your love your peace when I signed up for that and when we signed up for that there was this there was this fine print you all know what the fine print says I'm talking metaphorically I don't know if y'all signed the contract but <laughs> but here it is in the fine print Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This next part is super cool. It says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Therefore, go and make disciples. Therefore, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Hey, go and make disciples. I could stand here for, for half an hour and just say that over and over again because that's our job description. When we signed up to this life with Jesus, he said, you know, go and make disciples. It, you know what it doesn't say there? It doesn't say there, oh, only for those of you who went to Bible college. Or own, go and make disciples those of you who, who are good at public speaking. Or go and make disciples you who have the, the, the fascination for travel and want to go to a different country. No, it just says go and make disciples. Period. I mean, the period's after, but you know. You know just, just go and make disciples. And, you know... When we all get to heaven and we're worshiping Jesus, there's going to be people from every people group, from every language, from every nation, from every city, from every county, from every neighborhood. There are going to be people worshiping Jesus around the throne. So 
before we get any deeper, who needs to be there, right, from your neighborhood, your job, your class, your, the restaurant that you'd like to go to, from, from your family? Who needs, who needs to hear the word of the Lord? So, oh man, you know, it just got serious in here, Pastor Scott. <laughs> you know, I, I hope you feel a certain kind of way. <laughs> you might not like me after today, but it's okay. I'm that uncle that comes around for Thanksgiving and just shakes things up, right? <laughs> Here's what I want to do today. I want to, I want to teach what we do every day. And I want to let you know that it's really simple, that this going and making disciples stuff, it's not rocket science. And, 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 and it's not, uh, it's, it's not a, a crazy task to do. It's actually one of the most wonderful things that we get an opportunity to do. So I want to share how we do it, some practical ways, really practical, and I'm talking about practical, like, like, like very specific, like you can do this specific thing, right? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've learned this from, from uh, a book that uh, we've applied to our lives, and it's called Surprise the World by Michael Frost, if you want to put up that, that, that slide. And here's the acronym that we use every day. So I teach my team this. I have a team of, of 12 people, and I tell them, this is what we're going to do with our life. Yeah, we work at the coffee shop, and, 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 and yeah, we, we do things, but, but this is what I want you to focus most of your time on. We bless people we eat with people, we listen to the Holy Spirit, we learn the Gospels, and we are sent everywhere that we go. Okay, so that's the kind of outline of what I want to share with you today. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to go through it, right? And uh, how much time do I have, Pastor Scott? I, you better tell me, because... I could do the plus edition, or the one with commercials. <laughs> What? Okay. Okay. Led by the Spirit edition. Okay. <laughs> Put your seatbelts on. <laughs> you know, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, right here, right here, they casted a demon out of me. I was hurting myself. I was banging my head on the floor, like flipping and flopping. There was something attached to me from my past. And by the mercy and grace of Jesus, I was able to be free. So, I don't know why I said that, but. <laughs> so the first thing we do is we bless people. We, uh, you go to the blessed one. We spend our lives blessing people. And, and we try to, every single week, try to find three people that we can bless abundantly. So if I could surmise everything that I'm going to say today is, is I try to live my life in a way where people think, why are you the way that you are? Why are you so nice? Why, why are you so encouraging? Why, why, why did you help me on Thursday move when nobody else uh, showed up? So I try to create this moment of surprise in people's lives where they can ask me, ask me why because then, then I can share why right the Lord has saved me the Lord has given me peace and joy the Lord has given me a desire to love you no matter what the Lord has the Lord has has done so many good things so so it creates the opportunity for a, a conversation um, so we we bless people we bless people in, in a variety of different ways. Uh, a big thing, let me tell you, when you leave those doors outside, uh, in here, it's really easy to be encouraging. Like, man, you look, you, look, you look good today. I love the color orange. You look great today, you know? Or, or, or man, you, you, know, you know, it's easy to be encouraging in here. It's easy to give a, 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 a compliment. It's easy to, to, um, to be nice. You know, but that's not what happens outside. You know what happens outside? 
people are not nice. I don't know if you've experienced not nice people. <laughs> But people are not nice. People are not encouraging. People are trying to uh, climb up a ladder. They're trying to get theirs. They're trying to do everything possible to be set apart from, from everybody else and get whatever they need. You know, whether whatever field you're in of, of, of work, you know, the competitor is trying to win. You know what I'm saying? The, the, uh, if you're in class, you know, the, 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 the student is trying to be smarter. You know, everybody is trying to get ahead and above. It's this wild race to be, to be better, right? And you know what gets lost in that is, is encouragement, complimenting, you know, because there's a lot of hate outside, right? So if you being encouraging, it's, it's very countercultural. You just being nice, <laughs> it's very, very different. Because people are expecting you to not be nice, to not be loving, to not be encouraging, to not be complimentary. People are expecting you to be how they are, <laughs> right? So we bless people. I had this, I had, there was this, this lady in Estonia, she was part of the team. She, she's, uh, she went to school for um, Russian, political science and nuclear weapons. She's, she's one of the smartest people I know. She's, she's got these mega degrees and, 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 and you know, she could, our boss says all the time, she can run a small country by herself, <laughs> right? And, and the Lord called her to go to Estonia. And let me tell you, the number one thing that has drawn her closer to Jesus. It's not political debates. It's not talking about weapons. It's not talking about border, the borders in, in between Russia and Estonia. It's not talking about uh, uh, the grand scale of war and all of this, which she's very knowledgeable about. The number one thing that has drawn her closer to Jesus is baking cookies. <laughs> baking cookies, baking chewy, chocolate chip cookies, you know, warm right out of her, her oven, you know, like the smell like covers her entire apartment building, you know, like, like the, she started putting cookies on people's doors in her building. And next thing you know, you get kids knock, she got kids knocking on her door. Hey, how about them cookies? <laughs> what, what about those cookies? It's been a while. <laughs> And that turned into, you know, uh, her meeting their parents and, and helping the kids with homework. That turned into uh, the parents being so bewildered by why this lady is making cookies and helping their kids with homework that they ask why. And that, that turned into her sharing her love for her neighbors because of the love that Jesus showed her. That turned into them being involved in each other's lives and her being able to start this relationship. And, and, and she's, they've even visited her, her church before, even though that's not the ultimate goal is to get people in church, but, but that's just a sign of like their relationship, that they would cross those borders, you know? So, cookies, right? Nothing difficult here. You didn't need to go to Bible college to bake cookies. You don't need to go to Bible college to tell somebody their shirt looks great. You don't need to go to Bible college. To just show the love of Jesus. All right? So nothing complicated here. We're on track. Nothing difficult. So three times per week, we try to bless people abundantly um, and create that question, why? Um, the next thing we do, it's one of the, my favorite things to do, is we eat. We eat with others. I have to look at the screen, because sometimes I say, we eat people. But I'm trying to say is, we eat with people. 
okay? While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his di disciples. Hey, look what it says there. He's, he's eating, he's having dinner, right? And then look who's around. There's, there's tax collectors, very despised, very despised. They're like traitors, right, to the people. And sinners, hey, some, 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 some translations go deeper into who the sinners were. Prostitutes, uh, 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 thieves, you know? Like, like, like Jesus is having dinner with, hey, the low of society, those who, who you don't want over on Thursday night. Those who, if they come over, you know, were hiding the tablets and video games in case they get any ideas. We eat with people. One of the main things that we do three times a week is we invite people into our homes. Here's what happens over a meal. Have y'all ate with people before? No? You've, I'm sorry, bro. Let's have lunch sometime. <laughs> When you eat with somebody, you're sitting across the table and something happens. You become vulnerable. You have to, to eat, you have to chew your food. There's this, there's this, this, this place of like openness that, that you say when you're sitting across from somebody, I trust you enough to eat with you. Right? In the Old Testament, when you ate with somebody, you put your weapons down and you showed, hey, I trust that this person isn't going to stab me in the back. I trust this person. And it's almost like this spiritual thing happens. I can't, t I, you know, it's, it, that's a Jordy thing, you know. I can't tell you exactly what's happening. But it's this moment of vulnerability and openness that when you sit down across somebody, there's a an aspect of trust, an aspect of sharing life, communicating. And I don't know why Jesus made us like this. Like he could have easily made us like the plants outside. You know, we just we just sit there, let the let the sun come out, photosynthesis, we process, you know, all of the nutrients we need and, and nobody ever we don't have to put anything in our mouth. But he made us in a way where we have to sit down and have this community moment. <laughs> where we have to sit down and eat. We have to pause, we have to slow down, we have to either cook or buy something, and, and hopefully we get to do it with somebody, right? It's this, it's this, it's this beautiful, ugly moment. <laughs> and we invite people into our homes to eat all the time. Like, you guys like food? I, most people like food. I'm sorry if you don't get some help. <laughs> no, seriously, there's people that need help if they don't like food. Um, we invite people into our homes. We, we were inviting people into our homes that, that first uh, month that we were living there. People were interested. Who are these Americans having inviting us for food over to their home? They're, they're, making, they're making deep dish Chicago pizza. What is that? <laughs> And we had this lady that she would come, she would come every week. Every time we had an invitation, she would come and we would have food and, and we'd, 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 have y'all heard of Alpha Course? It's like this video series, it's, it's pretty cool. But we would play the video and then we would talk about, you know, faith. You know, and it wasn't like, this is what you need to believe in. It was just like striking questions. And she kept coming and she kept talking. And at some point, I can't tell you at what point, uh, she said yes to Jesus. At some point, because, because a few uh, months later, she said, I want to do that thing where you go into the water and, and you come out a new person. <laughs> and I said, that's baptism. She said, yeah, that. <laughs> And we go, we go out, and it's a super cold day, you know, like, because Estonia has, like, two days of winter, of summer, like, 368, 363 days of, sum, of winter. That joke didn't get through my head. <laughs> um, it's, it's cold. It's not, it's not nice. Uh, we're standing there in the water, it's freezing. I try to stay just not further than that. Um, 
and I, I look out and I don't see her, uh, her husband. I don't see her parents. I don't, I don't see her extended family. I don't see any friends. I, don't, I, I see her two kids standing there. Though. And we did the thing, you know. In that, in that moment, I realized that, like, she had made a decision to go against society, against family, against any social network that she had, against her coworkers, against, you know, it's like, why do you believe in this thing? Like, science has proved it all, you know, evolution, uh, 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 all of the things. Like, how are you so dumb that you would have faith in something that you can't see, that you can't feel, that you don't know about? How unsmart are you to make this decision? <laughs> but I saw her kids there. And they saw their mother do something very special. They saw their mother start something, a journey that I know now her kids will be discipled, that I know now she will have a different life because she said yes to Jesus. And hey, by this point, uh, I don't know if you're following, but it's just like cookies and deep dish Chicago pizza. Nothing special, nothing special. Nothing out of the ordinary. The Lord wants to use the, 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 the ordinary, the mundane, the, the things that you have access to, and he wants the glory through it, right? Nothing special about Jordy. No qualifications. Just making food and hanging out with people. We can do that, right? Okay. Next thing I tell, so, so we try to do that three times a week, right? How many meals do we have a week? If you're eating three meals a day, seven, seven days, that's 21, 21 meals. We can give up, we can give three to bless others. You know, maybe it's a coffee. Maybe it's, you know, going to a Pizza Hut buffet. That, that's still a thing? No. No, that's subpar. <laughs> no Pizza Hut buffet. You know, every single meeting that I had with Pastor Scott was at Pizza Hut buffet. <laughs> and one time we did Subway. That's a shame. <laughs> that, that, that there's no more Pizza Hut buffet. Okay, we learn, we learn. The next thing we do is we learn, if you want to get that, that picture up, um, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. So that you might follow in his steps. Because let me tell you, when you live your life trying to provoke the question, why are you the way that you are? You better have a reason. You better have an answer. Because if you're just doing it for charity, if you're just doing it for the feel good, and, and it's going to lead nowhere. That's not disciple making. That's just doing good things. And let me tell you, there's millions of people doing good things <laughs> that are not making disciples. So your job is to make disciples. And in order to make disciples, you have to know who, you, who they're being disciples of, because they're not disciples of you, right? I don't want anybody to look and act more like Jordy. Because let me tell you, Jordy is gonna mess up. <laughs> Jordy is going to say the wrong thing. Jordy's going to, you know, you know, you know, stub his toe on that speaker and, and, and you know, say the, the, the F word. You know what I'm saying? Jordy's going to, Jordy's going to, Jordy's going to mess up. That, that's one thing I can guarantee. Like, I'm going to do something wrong. <laughs> but Jesus, the closer they can be like Jesus, the whole process of becoming disciples is, is growing closer in the ways of Jesus, following in his steps. And the best place to find the ways of Jesus is in the Bible and specifically in his life. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels. So I tell my team, as a job, read the Gospels. 
Part of your job on being on this team is to read the Gospels. And I'm not talking about devotion time, like, like you still connect with the Lord, but I'm saying as your job, to equip yourself, to prepare yourself, read the Gospels. Read about Jesus. Find content about Jesus everywhere. Let me tell you, we live in a day today that uh, y'all have one of these? Yeah, y'all have one of these? Y'all have the, the Bible app? There's, there's probably over a hundred different English translations on there. There's devotions. There's, there's, there's even, you know, like now they have these like really cool uh, images that have the, you know, the Bible verse on it. You know, share the image, the verse of the day. Anyways, there's, there's access. And you know, y'all have Kindle or books or whatever. There's access to, to I would say, millions of books in English about Jesus. Uh, this is being recorded, right? Yeah, and it's probably gonna go on, it's probably online, are we live? Yep, not live, but it's probably gonna go somewhere, yeah? So, <laughs> or else you're just taking up space on your computer. Uh, <laughs> most churches are recording their service since probably before COVID time, but then after COVID, it's like everybody's online doing online service. Like there are millions of videos about Jesus. Hopefully they're preaching about Jesus today, right? But there's, there's on YouTube, there's, y'all following me? There is so much. We are swimming, literally drowning in Jesus content, there's songs. Like, like I was trying to pull up a song today on the, on the right over here to be encouraged, and I put the name of the song, and, and I can't tell. There's like a dozen different artists singing the same song about Jesus. There's, there's so much access to Jesus, guys. We have no excuse to not know our Lord, to not know our Savior, to not be prepared. If you don't know how to read, listen. If, you, if you're blind, uh, uh, listen. If you, if, 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 if you don't have access to books, um, 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 ask. Like, in the lobby, there's tons of material. Like, I'm just so frustrated. <laughs> we have everything that we need, guys. Here, listen to me. It's more than just these sermons. It's more than just Sunday. This is our Savior we're talking about. He wants us to know him. And he wants the whole world to know him. All right? So we need to be prepared to share him. Not just share our testimony. Not just share, you know, this is, I hope that 100% of the people that are praying for people at the motorcycle rally, that you'll be able to share about Jesus. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? So yeah, so we, we, we learn, we learn. We spend significant time in the Gospels. The next thing we do, and, I, and I'm going to start winding down here, because y'all don't like me anymore. <laughs> y'all feeling convicted, but let me tell you, that's not Jordy. I'm just, I'm just saying it how it is. Um, next thing we do is we spend time, significant time, listening to the Holy Spirit. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Listen, if we're eating with people and blessing people and, and spending time in the Gospels, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us, to direct us. You know, sometimes you're reading and you just don't even know what you're reading, but if you lean into the Holy Spirit, he'll, he'll highlight to you, you know, an insight, something special. Let me tell you that, that I tell my team to spend time alone with the Holy Spirit. Spend time alone and listen. Because here's what we like to do. I love to talk. Y'all obviously know that, right? I love to talk. 
and my prayers most of the time they're like Lord please why I need this uh, 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 heal that person and 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 oh man I, I really need to raise my budget so please help me raise my budget or my wife is sick she really needs healing please heal her or or you know like uh, all of the things right I could I could just keep going and going and going and going and going but the Lord wants you to listen the Lord wants you to take a moment because he's speaking, he's communicating, he's sharing. And, but if we do all the talking, we'll never hear. Let me tell you, the Lord, the Lord doesn't want to interrupt your life. He wants to be a part of your life. He doesn't want to like mess up your schedule. He wants to be a part of that schedule. When you spend time listening to the Holy Spirit, just be quiet. Just sh shut yourself in. This is where I said I just locked my kid in her room, right? And then Emilia, you know, she's like, you're a liar, Dad. We don't have locks. But you did stick me in the room. Um, put Emilia to play or give her a show or whatever. Just get alone, you know? Create the situation where you could just sit down and listen. And I'll tell you that 100% of the time that you give the Lord the time and the space, He will communicate. He's communicating. He's communicating right now. You know, it might not be like an audible voice, like, thus saith the Lord. You know, it, it might be a picture. Might be a song that you remember. Might things he'll bring things to your remembrance. You know, it might be a color, and the next time you see that orange shirt, you need to speak to that person. It might be a memory that just comforts you. It might it might be just a sense of peace, knowing that you are in His perfect will right now. The Lord is communicating, and we just need to listen. We just need to shut up sometimes. I don't know if I'm going to be invited back. <laughs> the last thing we do is we're a, sent, we're a sent people. When you said yes to Jesus, when you got your job description of making, going and making disciples, you are now a sent person. Everywhere that you go, you are sent. You are sent on his behalf. You are sent to work. You're sent to the grocery store. You're, you, you, you're sent to school. You're sent to church here on, on Sunday. You know, you're sent to uh, play golf. You, know? you are a sent person everywhere that you go. Because there are people that you have influence with that I will never have influence with. There are people that you are specifically sent to and called to that nobody else in this room will ever even have the chance to meet them. My brother-in-law is sitting here. He's an endodontist. I'm sorry, Andrew, I'm p picking on you. He's an endodontist. He's, he's relieving people of massive uh, pain in their mouth. And he is meeting people that, thankfully, <laughs> I will never meet. So he has influence that I will never have. And the Lord is sending us to those people that only we might have influence over, that maybe you're the only person that's praying for them. I encounter that in Estonia. I meet people and I pray for them and I'm the only person that they don't have a praying grandmother. They don't have a, uh, you know, a church that's, that's, that's praying for them or, you know, I'm the only person praying for them. So that I know there's people in your life that the Lord is sending you to. And let me tell you another, another thing is when we signed up for this life, uh, there's no days off. So in the contract, right, in the list of benefits, <laughs> there's no PTO, there's no pay time off. 
There's no sick days. There's no holiday accumulation. There's, you're just sent to go and make disciples. There's no causes, there's no stipulations. It's just go and make disciples. At the grocery store, when, the, you know, the days when I least want to make disciples, the days where I'm just feeling like, man, it's dark, it's cold, you know, my kid is annoying me, I don't want to, I just want to lay down and watch Netflix the whole day, like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just feeling like I don't want to do anything. Uh, Elizabeth will be like, go get some milk at the grocery store, and I go to the grocery store, and I don't want to see anybody, I'm like doing this around the lane. Like, I'm just avoiding people at all costs, right? And that's usually when the Lord brings somebody in my life. I'll go to the cereal lanes, like, hey, Jordy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> not today, Lord. Let me just sit on my recliner and watch TV, please. The Lord has convicted me so much of this because I'm the guy on the airplane that just sits down and puts his headphones on right away. I'm not an airplane like evangelist. I'm not a flight evangelist. But the Lord gets people next to me all the time that just want to talk. And I just want to not talk, especially on like a 10 hour flight. It's like, but hey, the Lord has brought this person to me and I'm sent to them. And I need to put myself aside. I need to put my feelings aside. I need to put my, my preferences aside. And I need to ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want to bless this person? How do you want me to love them right now? How do you want me to, to, to what do you want me to share? You know, like where are they at? Is today the day that they get to know you? Or is today the day that they're just encouraged? And, and what am I supposed to do right now? You know, it's this interaction with the Lord that, that guides our steps. So today I'm encouraging you, bless people, right? Could we do that? Could we bless people? Eat with people, right? You know, if you're going out to dinner, invite somebody over, you know? Take somebody to uh, not Pizza Hut. <laughs> the inferior pizza ranch. <laughs> Actually, I can't hate on them. They have some really good fried chicken. It's great. Um, learn the Gospels. Be prepared with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Just, just get alone. Allow the Lord to speak to you. And be sent everywhere. Everywhere that you go.